I think the Green Bay Packers have one of the brightest futures out of any team in the NFL. And that is mostly thanks to Jordan Love, who looked very good this year. And I still feel like he isn't given enough respect. He played as one of the best quarterbacks in the league this year. So today, we are going to see what the future could look like for this Packers team. And we are going to see if we can turn them into one of the best rosters in the league. And I'm excited to get into this one, because I don't even know the last time I did just a straight up Packers rebuild. So get a drink, get a snack, get whatever, because like I said, this should be fun. But if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like. I know it sounds stupid, but it really does help out the channel. And let's see, what's a good like goal? We've been pretty easily hitting 3,000 likes whenever I ask for it. So if, and only if we hit 3,000 likes, it'll let me know that y'all want to see another realistic rebuild. And the one I have planned next, I'm not going to spoil at all what it is. I guess I will a little bit. It'll be with a, a rookie. That'll be the focal point an upcoming rookie in real life, who I think the team could draft. Not the Drake May one, it's gonna be a different one. So again, 3,000 likes, which we've been hitting, and I'll do that. But subscribe for more, trying to hit 40k within the next few days. We're very close, so if you like Madden Rebuilds, that is literally all I do. And it'll make you an OG of the channel for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers, definitely. And massive shout out, I'm finally doing this. Massive shout out to Major Maxton for the suggestion of today's video. That was very hard for me to say, I don't know why. But their link is in the description. And if you want a shout out, just let me know either what team I should rebuild or any goofy idea you have for a rebuild. I mean, just look at the ones I have on my channel. Come up with something like that. I don't know. But it helps me know what y'all want to see because sometimes I run out of ideas, which is all the time. I mean, just harass me to do it for like 30 days and I'll probably do it eventually. I don't know. But enough yapping. Let's get into more yapping. And let's talk a little bit about this team. I mean, there isn't a lot to talk about, uh, but this receiving core did really well this year. I was a big Jaden Reed enjoyer before the draft and he looked really really good. Romeo Dobbs was good. Dontavian Wicks was really good. Are Packers fans gonna hate me if I make Christian Watson the number four? They might. I don't know how Packers fans feel about Christian Watson. Uh, we'll leave him as the number three over Wicks. I don't know. This defense, I don't feel great about. Thankfully, they got rid of Joe Barry, but on paper, it's definitely pretty old. Well, I say on paper. No, it's just old. Like, we are probably gonna need at least one new player at every position. Unless we can develop Lucas Van Ness, we might try to do that. I haven't ever seen him do particularly well in this game, though. We'll probably need a new D-lineman, a new corner, at least one new safety, probably. We'll probably need to replace Devondre Campbell. We'll just see what happens there. And I don't feel great about this interior, plus David Bakhtiari's old and injured all the time. I mean, that doesn't matter here, but the old part does. This team is very good at finding tackles, though. Like, Rashid Walker could just replace David Bakhtiari. We'll see. I like this team a lot. This was one of my sleeper teams to be a playoff team heading into the year, so I'm a little biased towards it. I don't know. But we still might have some work to do in the offseason. So let's get into the offseason and I'll see who this team's rumored to draft. I actually have no idea. Oh yeah, also wait, does anyone know a fix for this this stupid glitch? Just look at these numbers. 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Let's get down here. 8, 8, 12, 10, 10, 11. Like, what is this? What? This glitch has existed for I don't know, 3 years, maybe more. I have no idea. Like 22, 24, 24, 28, 32, round two, pick four. I don't understand. Let me know if you know a, a solution to this, because I every time it makes Troy Franklin and Jordan Morgan, like it puts them up here as like a third number one and then a second number two. So that's fun. But in the Super Bowl, Madden predicts the 49ers to win it 21 to 14 over the Chiefs. We'll see. I mean, that's my prediction. Not that exact score, but I think the 49ers are going to win it. God, this really is a, uh, what's a a good way I can say this without uh, YouTube removing this video. Uh, a not good versus not good Super Bowl. You'll, you will you can put two and two together and figure out what I'm trying to say. An H-man versus an S-man Super Bowl. Like I looked at the playoff bracket and I was like, yeah, those are those are my two least, least favorite teams on each side. That is the worst outcome. That's tough. Anyways, that's the Super Bowl. Cool. But now for re-signings, I actually have no idea who this team has to re-sign. So let's see. Okay, well we have eight AJ Dillon, we have the fifth year for Eric Stokes, which I, I don't think we're going to be picking up. He's just been too injured, unfortunately. Darnell Savage, I would want, but he isn't interested. I just signed Josh Metellus, so he's here. Rudy Ford is a little interested, but honestly, he's already 29. It's not very hard to find a safety, especially in this game. Like, I, maybe I'm crazy, but I don't think we're going to re-sign any of these guys, especially not Metellus, because he's not actually on the team in real life, but whatever. It's not like he played here for 
me anyways. Keyshawn Nixon, eh. Like, I'm, I'm just not that interested in any of these guys. We can definitely upgrade over them. So let's get into free agency. And this is gonna be an interesting one. We'll see what we wanna do. And, you know, the Packers apparently might cut David Bakhtiari. They probably will, but I'm not going to. He's gonna be healthy here, at least. And the cap doesn't really do much for us. I would rather have a good tackle when actually healthy than 21 mil in cap. So is it realistic? I don't know. It's not 100% that they're gonna cut him, but I wanna keep him, at least for this year. Will we extend him? I don't know, but right now I would rather have him than not. So I'm gonna keep him. But honestly, this isn't the best free agent class ever, especially for us. There's an old left tackle, which we already have. There are receivers, which we don't really need anymore. There's a defensive tackle, which we don't really need. I mean, he would be an overall upgrade over TJ Slayton, so maybe I'm thinking about Grover Stewart. But the one player I do for sure want to go for is Grant Delpit. I like him in real life. He started off this year really good, then kind of fell off a little bit, but was still good. So we will try to sign him, and it looks like he does sign. So that's really the only move we're going to make here. The Lions signed Tyron Smith? What? Why? <laughs> okay, sure. I feel boring going for only one free. We'll go for Grover Stewart. We, we might as well. We have money. Defensive tackle isn't really a need, but like, I want to sign someone else. So Grover Stewart, two years, 31 mil. I don't know why I said that like I expected him to sign immediately. Also, we don't have a lead for him, so I guess I'll go two years, 34. Okay, now we have a lead. So now let's see if he wants to sign. And he does. Okay, cool. So those are two pretty big defensive additions. Gabe Davis on the Colts. I could see that for some reason. But yeah, two pretty good additions. And now let's see what we can do in the draft. But in the draft, we pick at number 25. And I think we're just going to go with the player at the top of the board, which is Cooper DeGene. You know, they could also have to trade up for him. That's what I've seen some mock drafts do. I don't know. I'm just going to do what to falls. I'm going to do what falls to us because there are a few needs for this team. And Cooper DeGene did fall to us. So let's take him. And now we should have a good corner to pair with Jair Alexander. But oh yeah, I forgot Jair Alexander also has trade rumors. So I, again, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to, but I guess there are rumors until they happen. I'm not doing them. I really don't like this offensive line though. I, well, I like what we have at tackle, but the interior other than, why can I not think of his name? Elton Jenkins, other than Elton Jenkins, I don't love the interior. John Runyon was decent, but like I, I didn't resign him because we can upgrade there. But I don't know. I don't know if I want to take Cedric Van Pran yet or like Christian Haynes. You know what? I will take Christian Haynes. He looks pretty terrible here. <laughs> we could also go Cedric Van Pran who looks better. You know what? We'll do that. Let's take him. He is hidden dev 88 strength. Cool. Should be a decent center. Mm, well, there goes Javon Bullard. That's someone I was going to take. We could also go with Jaden Hicks. I mean, this is close to the range he's projected from what I've seen. Maybe third round, but eh, we're close enough. I could also just trade this pick down or like completely away for picks next year. I don't know. Oh, what a great offer. A, a second round pick in two years straight up for our second round pick. I, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. These all suck. I think this one from the Jets is the best. Second. Wait, what? That confused me. I was like, wait, are we still in the first round? What happened? Because where it says Green Bay Packers, it says second round pick 25, but the San Fran, the, the 49ers offer is, it says the actual pick number, second round 64 overall, which would be the 32nd in the second round. Why does it, why are they different? Why doesn't it say either 25 and 32 or what would it be? 55? No. Yeah. 55 and 64, right? Or 53, 57. I don't know. One of the picks like pick one or the other. Why, why are they different? Me when I'm racist? I don't know. We might, we might just take this trade though. I mean, it's not great, but I mean, it isn't bad to trade down seven spots for three extra picks. Sure. Whatever. But now I guess we'll go with Jaden Hicks. Don't know how he is here, but we'll take him. Also hidden dev 87 speed, 92 Excel. Cool. He looks good. Has really good strength. That's interesting, but I'll make a few more picks and then we will see how we did in the draft. But in the draft, we got some pretty good players. I mean, Cooper DeGene is a 20, 25. Wow. 75 overall. We picked him at 25. I guess that's maybe what I was trying to say. I have no idea, but he should be a good corner. Cedric Van Pran is only a 68, but at least does have a dev trait. Should be able to develop. We'll see. Jaden Hicks, of course, also has a dev trait. He's a 73 overall. He'll start. That's a good pick. Then we also picked up Christian Mahogany. Kalen King fell to the fourth round, which he could be a monster in the NFL. I don't know. A couple years ago at Penn State, he was one of the best corners in the nation, but this, this last year, he really fell off. So I, there's a world where he does nothing in the NFL. There's a world where he becomes great in the NFL. I have no idea. I wouldn't be stunned if he went to like the Steelers or something to get paired back up with 
Joey Porter Jr., which no spoiler, but if you're not subscribed to the second channel link in the description, I think I'm gonna be coming out with a mock draft pretty soon. But yeah, pretty good draft overall, and let's get into the first year of this rebuild. But here's a look at the team heading into the season. We're looking pretty good. You know, the O-line should develop, the two rookies we have, and really nothing else changed on offense. I mean, there isn't really much to change with this offense. I get, again, maybe we could have cut David Bakhtiari. Whatever. I don't wanna, like I said. <laughs> but the defense is definitely a lot better than before. Younger and just overall better. We added Cooper DeGene, Grover Stewart, Jaden Hicks, and Grant Delpit. So we're looking good there. So I'm liking how this team's looking. It's not perfect yet or anything, but this is a good way to start out the rebuild. So let's get to the midseason point of year number one, and I can't wait to be two and five. It's going to be great. Okay, no, thankfully we are the opposite. We are five and two at the midseason. We have the second best offense in the league, at least in terms of points per game. Our defense is also very good too. Our pass D is terrible though, so uh, I don't know. Our defense is good in everything except, you know, pass D, which doesn't make sense because, you know, usually your pass defense is more important. Usually you allow more yards through the air than anything else, but somehow it's still good overall. I don't know. We have some upgrades. Anything important? No, but we do have some very important re-signings to worry about. Uh, a lot of them, like all of our good players. <laughs> okay, well, the first one we are going to worry about is Jordan Love. I mean, big surprise there. He might get extended this offseason in real life. This contract is like exceptionally cheap though. Uh, we'll up it a little bit. This is still very cheap for what he's probably gonna get, but five years, 228 mil, and he takes it. Cool. Kenny Clark will offer three years, 67 mil, and he doesn't take it for some reason. All right. He says he will, but he doesn't right now for some reason. Aaron Jones, I don't think they're gonna re-sign him in real life. I mean, I didn't think they would re-sign him, you know, the last time they extended him two years ago or whenever that was, maybe three years ago even. I don't know. We might though. We'll see. David Bakhtiari, probably not. Eric Stokes, if he could stay healthy, he could be good, but we'll think about that too. These are some like tough decisions here, tougher than I expect. I don't want to give Aaron Jones a three-year deal. How about, how about two years, 21 mil? That's pretty cheap. He takes it. And then we'll worry about the rest of these later. We will also have the fifth year option for Quay Walker and Devontae Wyatt. Quay Walker's actually developing pretty nicely here, so I think we'll pick both of those up. But we'll have to see how we finish. I think we'll finish somewhere around like nine and eight, maybe a little better. No, my guess is 10 and seven. I think our defense is gonna fall off a little bit, but I think our offense will still be pretty good. So let's see. We'll get to the end of the year and we will see what happens. Okay, wow, never mind. Maybe we are just building something special here because we are already 14 and three in year one. I definitely thought we would choke, but we didn't really get worse with anything. Our defense got better. Our pass deed still wasn't phenomenal, but it got better. Okay, that normally doesn't happen in rebuilds. If you're mid at something at the midseason, like for example, we had a bad pass deed. Usually in the second half of the year, your defense just goes to shit. Like, <laughs> that's normally what happens. If there's something holding it back, it really doesn't go well in the second half of the year, but that changed here, thankfully. But Jordan Love was pretty good. Not that many passing touchdowns, but 42 200 yards, 24 touchdowns, 6 picks, 74% completion percentage. Very good season from him. Aaron Jones, 1,300 yards, 4.1 per carry, 19 touchdowns. Damn. Even Deontay Foreman as the number two, 11 touchdowns will take that. Jaden Reed with 1,200 yards led the team, 5 touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs was only 3 yards off from 1,007 touchdowns. Watson was pretty good and Musgrave was pretty good. The blocking was insanely good. What? <laughs> Is that like 20 sacks? Teen sacks on the season. Season. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. That's like barely one per game, like barely over one per game, like 1.06 or something. I don't know, or 04. No idea. Doesn't matter. Devondre Campbell, 95 tackles led the team, which is a good thing. It looks like our defense was getting off the field. Quit. TFLs 15 for Rashawn Gary, 12 for Kenny Clark, and sacks 12 and a half for Rashawn Gary. Normally he kind of sucks in this game, so I'm glad to see he actually did well here. Eight and a half for Kenny Clark, six and a half for Lucas Van Ness. We still have. Have. Yeah, Preston Smith had half of a sack. <laughs> Lucas Van Ness had 12 and a half times what Preston Smith had. Oh, I guess he did play more snaps. That's interesting. I thought it was the other way around. I don't know. But Devondre Campbell led the team with four picks. He had a good overall year. He won't be up there because he didn't, or up there for defensive player of the year because he didn't have many tackles, which tackles are the most overrated stat of all time, but whatever. Jair Alexander had two picks and then one for a few players. But let's check out yearly awards. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes, 
big shocker there. I'm surprised to not see Dak Prescott higher. My GOAT, my glorious king, Geno Smith at number seven. Offensive player of the year goes to Brandon Ayuk. Oh, I almost missed Aaron Jones up there at number five. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Rashawn Gary at five, no other Packers. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Jaden Daniels on the Buccaneers. That's interesting. Caleb Williams ended up on the Vikings? Maybe a, a trade up or something? I don't know. Malik Neighbors on the Bears, that could happen. Interesting stuff here. And Jeremiah Trotter wins Defensive Rookie of the Year for the Saints. Cooper DeGene at number seven. Lots of Rams up here. Was Jordan Love at least? Yeah, okay, he was at number five for best QB. I was kind of surprised to not see him up there for MVP at all, but a lot of quarterbacks just do insanely well in this game. But hey, amazing season, amazing start to this rebuild. Poor Bears, they went two and 15. But we have quite a few upgrades, a couple starters at least. So we'll take that, a few. I saw Christian Mahogany too. But let's see who we're gonna be taking on in the divisional. It is the 10 and seven Philadelphia Eagles. Interesting. We also have a playoff blizzard. I mean, that's an advantage for us. Oh, it is in Green Bay. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Such a weird glitch. Everyone has the same number 11, just like default jersey. They all have the same face. So weird. In some franchises that happens and in others it doesn't. But if it happens in a franchise, it happens for every like cut scene like that. I don't know. It's so weird. Even more upgrades here though. We'll take that. But let's simulate this game out and we will see if we can get a win. Of course not. Why would we win? We we lose 27 to 21. I mean, they had the better overall team, but like, come on, we were 14 and three, whatever. Let's get into the off season. And this is going to be an interesting one. I might make some controversial moves here, which I mean, no matter what you do in life, it's always going to be controversial to someone. So I don't know. Wow, that's a Super Bowl. The Colts beat the Cowboys. They don't get ridden here. That's not the best phrasing, but it's it's Colts and Cowboys. Like, come on, you know what I mean? They win 28-27 over the Cowboys. Don't know about that one in real life, but you never know. But now in the re-signing period, or at least we will be in a second, we have some interesting decisions to make. Kenny Clark, we are gonna be paying three defensive tackles if we re-sign him. He was good though. Yeah, we might have to. Our D-line's gonna be so expensive. I guess we'll just let Grover Stewart go soon. I guess that's the plan. As long as he re-signs, we'll offer him three years 67. I mean, that's not what it says he wants. That was just our offer at the midseason. We'll go neutral three years 72 and he doesn't take it. Okay. How much is a tag? Is a tag super expensive? Yeah, I don't know about that. Okay. Well, it says he's super interested, but I just, I guess not for some reason. Apparently that means nothing. So that's cool. Uh, Eric Stokes is super cheap. So we'll resign him. He does actually resign. Quay Walker will pick up the fifth year and would it be better to just not pick up the fifth year for Devonte Wyatt? I mean, that's kind of expensive. Oh, well, sure. Why not? David Bakhtiari, we won't resign. TJ Slayton's pretty good, but like, we don't need him at this point. <laughs> We're good. But let's get into free agency and we'll see what we can do. Hopefully there are better players this year. Ooh, okay. There are better free agents this year. Brandon Ayuk would be kind of fun. He's not interested though. How, how close can we get to the lead? We can be tied for it with the Texans. I wish I knew how interested he was in the Texans or if they just put in a good offer. I don't know. If, you, if the player isn't interested in your team and there are other teams that actually have good offers in too, it seems almost impossible to sign players. I mean, it happens. You can have the lead even with very high interest on and players will still reject, which is weird because, you know, as I always say, the top offers take literally everything into account. So there should be no way that should happen, but whatever. Should we try to get him? I don't know. Well, I'll look through here and we'll see what we want to do. Okay. Well, these are the players we are going to go for in free agency. It's definitely uh, an older group, but I feel like we're at the point right now where we don't necessarily need to get younger. We need more, I guess, great players. I don't even know if we need them, but like we have the money, so we might as well. So yeah, we're going to go for Joel Batonio, Kenny Clark, and Khalil Mack. You know, the, the future of this team might be a little expensive, so I'm a little worried about that, but I don't know if we're going to get to that point. Hopefully not. We'll see. Oh, and we have to pay like receivers and stuff, though. It might not be great, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think we can get out of these deals either way and just all of ours in general, or at least restructure them. But let's see if we can sign these three players. It looks like all three sign and we do get all three of them. So that's huge. Oh yeah. And what we're going to do with the O-line, the reason we signed Joel Batonio, obviously no more David Bakhtiari. So I moved Elton Jenkins over to left tackle and he's been pretty damn good when he's had to play left tackle. I He's been arguably better than when he's played guard. So we'll try him there. I have no idea how he does at tackle in this game. I don't know if I've ever tried him there. We'll see what happens though. But I mean, this O-line is looking really good. Really, we're looking good 
overall. We could maybe use an upgrade at tight end because Luke Musgrave's only a 76 here. He's been all right though. And in the draft, I was gonna go for a D lineman, but I was like, I'll, I'll just re-sign Kenny Clark because like I was saying, we'll just cut Grover Stewart or just not re-sign him, I guess. So our D line shouldn't get too expensive. I actually have no idea what we're gonna do in this year's draft, actually. We might go like tight end or I guess guard or center or something. We'll see. But let's get to the draft and we will see what we want to do. But in the draft, the Bears once again have the number one pick. I guess this time it's their own pick. Did that happen last year too? I'm recording this the next day, so I, I just have no recollection of what I did yesterday here. Well, that's not true, but I can't remember like the draft and everything, the draft order, whatever. We pick at number 28. It doesn't matter. Let's see what we want to do here. So there was one good tight end. Is he still available? No. The receivers I was looking at are both gone. This is going to be tough. James Mahone looks pretty good. Spencer Hendricks too, but like we can definitely wait on those two. I'm looking for one of those like insane looking guards because sometimes there are like 82 overalls later. Jared Candidate looks really good. I don't love the lead block though. How about DeColdest Pettis? What the fuck? They have DeColdest in this game? I didn't know that. That's crazy. Or well, I guess maybe it was, uh, I don't know. That's interesting though. Okay, none of them look worth taking yet. I mean, if we have to, I might take a guard, but Steve Chavez, he looks pretty good. His play rec isn't the best though. I don't know if he's great. He looks good though. Mm, yeah, I don't know. None of the corners look like particularly great. How about D. Cohen? What's his speed? Eh, no. <laughs> I used to like picking at the back of the first. I thought I was better there than like early first, but now I'm not sure. I, I don't know what to do here. There are a lot of QBs. We don't need a QB. Tyquan Ware would be good, but he's not a good route runner. I mean, he's a deep threat with C deep route in the first round. I'm good. Calvin Reddick, also a bad route runner, except short route, I guess. Yeah, all the, is this just a terrible draft class or like, I don't know. I think we might trade this back. David Heller looks pretty good, but also he's like barely scouted. Eh, he had poor acceleration. I don't know. This is an interesting trade off where we could pick up an extra. Or no, wait, that's a first this year. Never mind. Trade down four spots for a three, a six, and a seven. That doesn't seem bad. I might do a good old custom trade back. Okay, now nah, I think I'll trade. I think I'll take this trade right here. I mean, just four spots for a third round pick. Sure. Not nearly as much as I wanted to trade down, but it's good value, so we'll do it. But I think I will go with a lineman. Denzel. Logan looks good. Same with James Mahone. They're both the same age. We can maybe get both, but do we really need both? I'm lazy. Or no, they're not the same age. Mahone's a year younger, so I think we'll go with Mahone. I was gonna say I'm lazy, so I'll just take Logan because he's already at right guard, but we'll go with Mahone. Only 21 years old. Sure. Hidden dev, 89 strength. Hidden. I already said hidden dev. I'm stupid. 82 acceleration. Sounds good. And let's see. I might go with a defensive tackle. Joe Barnett looks insane. There are so many of these defensive tackles that just have ridiculous speed, and he's definitely one of them. Elite speed, jumping, and acceleration. Even Tolik has insane speed. Like, do all these guys have insane speed? I don't know. Shelton Oliver has insane strength, which 46 is only second? Oh, well, it's tied for first. Okay. <laughs> I might go with one of these guys. Shelton Oliver is 384 pounds. Good lord. Dion Hayes is a year younger, though, and has better awareness. We might go with him. Yeah, sure, let's take him. Dion Hayes out of LSU. Sounds good. Hidden Dev, 90 59 strength. That's crazy. A deadly 47 change of direction. 60 jumping. Huge. He doesn't look 359 pounds. He looks maybe 300. I mean, I guess he's 6'4", but that's not, I don't know, that's not like insanely tall. He looks good though. We'll take it. I'm kind of surprised he is hidden, but I'm happy about it. A 6'6 six six playmaker receiver? That's crazy. He looks bad, but I don't know. I might take a chance on him later. Do those one like insanely receiver or insanely tall receivers still exist? Oh, there's another six six foot six guy, but there used to be like six foot receivers. This guy looks terrible. I haven't seen one of those in a long time though. I mean, six, six is crazy tall for a receiver, but it's not six, eight. I don't see any. I haven't seen one in a long time. I don't know. I might just simulate the rest of this out. I can't really find anyone else good. So we'll see how we did. All right. Yeah, this was definitely not the best draft in the world. This wasn't, <laughs> I mean, it was about what I expect. James Mahone's a 74. Dion Hayes is a 76. Were there any good options there? Like, did I just not see any? one? Ooh, Chris Samuels would have been good at 16. I think that was one of the receivers I wanted. Damn it. The other one was Reddick, but he went very high. I mean, was there another Reddick? Calvin Reddick too? I guess he would have been fine, but I don't think he ever would have gotten any playing time. No, yeah, there just wasn't really anyone good. There was a safety, but I mean, I guess we could have taken him. 
the QBs were good, but like, no. <laughs> yeah, that, that was just kind of unlucky. Ooh, a 67 overall corner to the Chargers. That's a great pick. Ooh, Joe Barnett was actually better than Deion Hayes. 78 overall, also hidden dev. Interesting. I don't know. I kind of like the 99 speed. This guy's better, but 99 speed, or ni not 99 speed, 99 strength is fun, so I don't know. And then I made a few of these picks. Like, did I show me picking Bullock? I don't know. I picked down to like spikes. None of these guys are good. McAllister's okay. Bullock is whatever. This was just not a very good feeling draft class. There were two players at an 80 plus. I don't even know the last time I've seen that in like a strong draft class. That's interesting. Well, hey, we got good players either way. The defensive tackle we got was one of the best players in the class, so we'll take it. And let's get into year two. I always forget what year we're in. But here's a look at the team heading into year two. Only an 83 overall. I'm surprised. I guess just because we don't have the best overall receivers maybe and I guess tight end and center, but I don't know. This team feels really good. I feel like I've said that four times in this rebuild. I don't know why, but this defense is pretty nice. I mean, the corner group is good. The edges are good. The D-line is pretty good. Just everything's good on our defense, it feels like. The only spot we can maybe use an upgrade is maybe like one better linebacker, but they're pretty good and maybe a better strong safety, but we should develop throughout the year, so I don't know. I really think this team should do well in simulation, so I can't wait to be three and four at the midseason. No, I think we'll be good. The Packers playbooks are surprisingly good in this game. I never really see them dominate though. Like I never see them do super well, which is kind of weird. Maybe the CPU just doesn't know how to fix them or something. I don't know. But let's get to the midseason point of year two and we'll see how we're doing. Oh God, I saw the Vikings at three and four and I thought that was us for some reason. I just did the Vikings. So now I'm all confused, but we are five and two at the midseason. Unfortunately, coming off a big loss to the Cowboys 24 to seven. So that's tough. But other than that, it looks like we're doing well. We're not really struggling with anything either. Our defense isn't great, but it isn't bad. It's a little above mid. It's not quite mid. We don't have that many rushing touchdowns though. And we kind of have a lot of giveaways. So maybe we get better throughout the second half of the year. Maybe we clean those up. I don't know. And we really don't have any takeaways. How are we five and two? We just must have the best offense and best defense of all time when we're not, you know, giving the ball away. I don't know. I don't know what the logic is there, but don't think too hard about it. Uh, but we're going to have more re-signings. Oh, okay. That's where the cap catches up to us. Really? Already? All right. Well, this is going to be tough. Now, I think we can get out of this at the end of the year. I don't know if we're going to be able to get Romeo Dobbs back. Prioritize him over Christian Watson. I also want Zach Tom back. Sometimes Zach Tom is like absolutely terrible in simulation, but he's been amazing here so far. So I don't know. Grover Stewart, like I said, will let go. Khalil Mack will probably have to let go. So this is our make or break year, maybe already. But no, nah, like I said, I think we'll be able to get out of this cap situation. We'll just have to see at the end of the year. And at the very least, I think we'll be able to tag Rashawn Gary. If we can't get the rest of these guys back, I think we'll still be fine. At least it'll give us something to draft. You know what I mean? So I'm not too worried about that. That's really all there is for us to do here. So let's get to the end of the season. And hopefully, hopefully we don't choke. That's always what we're hoping for. Okay, well, here we are at the end of year number two. And if you've seen one of the, one of these videos before, y'all know why we're here. Uh, before I reveal how we did in year two, if you haven't already, be sure to drop a like on the video. I'll do another one of these if we get to... 3,000 likes, 3,500? I don't remember this, the goal I set. I, I genuinely feel like I got memory wiped or something overnight. Like, I must have been a good-ass sleep. I don't know. But yeah, it'll let 3,500 likes. It'll let me know that y'all want to see another one of these. We are very close to 40k, so subscribe for more. And every time I say to do this, it seems like a ton of people actually do it. Be sure to turn on notifications for the channel if you want to be one of the first people to ever see these videos and make sure you don't want to miss them. There's going to be a ton of fun stuff coming this offseason, like I've been saying. A ton of fun rebuilds. You know, wherever the big free agents go, I'll rebuild that team with the free agents they add. I'll, wherever, you know, some of the quarterbacks actually get drafted after the draft, I'll do those. All that kind of stuff. But anyways, in year number two, we finished 11 and 6, and we made the playoffs. God, something I was just thinking is, I, I miss the, the 16 game schedules. I'm not gonna lie. I just miss when it was an even number of games. Like, the, the odd number of games is so aesthetically unpleasing. It's unpleasant 
unpleasant to me at least I don't know I mean I'm used to it now like it took me a long time to get used to them the new records and all that but I don't know I, j I just miss the even number of games but Jordan Love looks like he had an amazing season 3,800 yards 33 touchdowns nine picks 70 completion percentage he was very good more touchdown passes this year less yards I think but overall really good season he's now up to what an 89 overall 92 with morale at only 26 years old that's crazy Aaron Jones finished with 1500 yards 4.3 per carry 13 touchdowns again I have no idea if they're gonna extend him in real life I would guess no but we had the money and I didn't know what to do with it and he was very good it definitely paid off and we had two 1100 yard receivers Jaden Reed 1161 yards 11 touchdowns Romeo Dobbs just over 1100 yards only six touchdowns but other than those two not much for receiving the blocking 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 was really good I guess blocking works too sure but yeah the blocking was really good no complaints there I've seen much much worse I was probably the least sacks allowed in the league only 20 Devondre Campbell led the team with 142 tackles 108 for Quay Walker tackles for loss 19 for Kenny Clark 15 for Mac 13 for White and Stewart 10 for Gary and sacks nobody with a like great amount but eight and a half for Gary seven and a half for Mac five and a half for Kenny Clark and interceptions two for Alexander and Del Pitt and then one for Mac Campbell and Walker interesting we had no fumble recovery so we only had seven turnovers forced on defense that's not great uh that's a problem but MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes again big shocker Caleb Williams on the Vikings somehow up there did I already see that like I said I feel like I just lost all my memories overnight I don't know what happened offensive player of the year goes to CD Lamb AJ Dillon on the Eagles up there that's interesting oh Aaron Jones right above him I almost missed him at number seven defensive player of the year goes to another cowboy in Micah Parsons Devondre Campbell at number 10 offensive rookie of the year goes to Bo Finnegan for the commanders must be their new QB Paul McCoy at number eight I think he was our backup running back our number two back and defensive rookie of the year goes to Carlos Payne which is a cool name for the Cardinals no Packers so no awards we didn't really even get close for any did I like miss Jordan Love somewhere he wasn't up there for MVP at all no unlucky he was number five for best QB though so I guess we'll take that I don't know but we are going to be taking on our division rivals, the 9-8 and eight Detroit Lions in the wild card. We have some upgrades, Kalen King, okay, nobody really that important, but not much else for us to do here, so let's just simulate this game out. Wow, we struggled in some parts on offense, and we had the second least takeaways on defense, but let's simulate this game out and probably lose. Okay, no, we win. It is a low-scoring game, 18-13. to 13. How do you get either of those scores? Did we get only field goals? Like, what happened? Maybe they, they probably probably got a touchdown at the end and went for two and didn't get it. They tried to make it a field goal game, I would guess, and didn't get it. I don't know. Weird score. But we are going to be taking on, I guess, A.J. Dillon's new team, super notable. Uh, <laughs> the Eagles had a terrible defense, though. One of the worst. They do have a pretty good roster, it looks like. It hasn't really fallen apart too much. So I have no idea if we're going to win this. We should win it, I guess. I mean, we're the same overall, but we're at home. I don't know. We have some upgrades. Anything important? Sean Ryan, huge. That'll get us the win. That'll push us over the edge. But let's sim it out and we'll see if we can win. No, we get dookied on. We <laughs> we lose 28 to 7 to a team that is the same overall as us while we are at home. That's fun. That's cool. But let's get into the off season. And this is where we're going to have some big questions. I don't know who we're going to be able to bring back. And we have a Super Bowl rematch from last year's Super Bowl in real life. The or Cowboys, the Chiefs beat the Eagles 35 to 21. I'm just so used to seeing the Cowboys. They're almost called the Chiefs, the Cowboys. I don't know. I don't even know the last time I've won a Super Bowl in franchise. Like, we can make as crazy of a team as we possibly can. It still won't perform nearly as well as it should. Not that we have an insane team here yet, but I'm just preparing y'all for the unfortunate truth that it's going to be hard to win a Super Bowl, as it is for me all the time. But we have seven mil to work with, which clearly isn't enough, so <laughs> let's see how much cap we can free up. Okay, we're going to cut Devondre Campbell, I think. I mean, he's been good, but he's also only a 78 overall. He's 33 years old. That'll save us eight mil, so sure. Sure, why not? I mean, even Mac will. I I guess Mac Wilson isn't under contract, but he's almost as good of an overall. It, it won't be hard to find a new one, I don't think. We'll probably draft one, and he'll probably be better by the end of the year than Devondre Campbell, and much cheaper. But I did free up a pretty good amount of cap. We restructured a few players, but we we restructured Jordan Love, and that saved us like 16 mil or something. So Rashawn Gary, that would be hilarious if he just straight up rejected us. But five years, 137 mil, and he takes it. Okay, cool. We could have just tagged him too, but. If 
if he did reject us, but thankfully he didn't. And now we have some decisions to make. Uh, I, if Romeo Dobbs was interested, then sure, but he's not. Also, Zach Tom has been really good. Oh, he we just can't afford him. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe not then. Khalil Mack, eh, he wasn't that good. I'd rather just give Lucas Van Ness playing time. I get, we'll try to re-sign Romeo Dobbs. Five years, 69 mil, and he doesn't take it. Okay, well, nothing I can do about that. Lucas Van Ness will pick that up. Sure, that's not too expensive. Huh, I don't know what to do. I want to bring someone back here, but I, again, I don't know if I should bring Mac back. I don't, Zach Tom, we just can't afford. I mean, I'll offer him four years, 69 mil. He doesn't take it. Big shocker. Can we tag him? We'll be broke. We'll be in negative cap, but we'll do it. Sure. So we're unfortunately going to be saying goodbye to Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson, but there's nothing I can do about that. We just can't afford him. So we are actually going to have stuff to do in the draft, which is kind of nice. I'm not going to lie. Okay, well, we pick at number 28. Nope, 26. I know numbers. And there were some decent looking players that were supposed to go in this range. Are they still available is the question. There are a lot of safeties. Joe Newhouse. I didn't even look at him. What's his speed? Eh, eh, no. <laughs> I'm good. Is the one safety still available? He is, but he looks terrible. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, he's, uh, he's probably decent, but I don't know. Okay, well, let's see. There was also a receiver, which we desperately need, and he's still available. I didn't look at him closer than focus scouting him, but okay, no, he looks really good. He's not very good at route running other than deep route, which is fine. We'll just send him deep. I don't know if he's great, honestly. He has great speed, elite acceleration, which is good. You're in a 4-2-8 at his pro day. Probably going to be 92 speed or something because EA. His awareness might not be the best. Hopefully, it's a B and not a C. The more I look at him, the less I like him, but he still looks really good. I think he'll be like a 75. Could be better. I don't know. Deep threats are never that good of an overall, though. They're, no, they're never as good as they look, but I think he'll still be good. I'm just hoping for a dev trait. He might not have one, honestly. We'll see. Okay, he does. Hidden dev, 95 speed, 97 excel. He looks good. We'll take that. And now we are officially out of needs again. <laughs> no, that's not true, but we still need a linebacker, but I want y'all to take a look at this linebacker core or linebacker class. These are the best linebackers that were available. There was no first round player. These are the guys. There was no second round player. I didn't even look at these guys. I, I just saw it and I was like, nope, I'm good. Yeah, they all look terrible. Every single one of them. Wow. We could go with a, an outside linebacker. Like how does Max Singleton look? Uh, He's probably okay. Usually if one of these pass coverage linebackers don't have like really good speed, they're, they're not going to be good. I mean, it says he has great speed, but that's comparing it to like the edge rushers at this position. Like not the, not the cover linebackers. I mean, it is comparing it to those, but it's also comparing it to the edge rushers. I mean, that's interesting. I don't, okay, whatever. I might go with one of these guys. We'll see. I think I'll go with Max Singleton. I think he'll be the pick. I don't feel great about it, but we are desperate for a linebacker and he's our best option. <laughs> I mean, no, nah, I'll look for other stuff real quick, but it's probably going to be Singleton. All right. I feel like I've taken 12 guards in this rebuild in these drafts, but hey, why not another one? Sure. Nah, well, I don't know where I'm going to play this guy. He looks good though. Eric Keenan, he's a straight up first round talent. I mean, if we can get a good player, we might as well take a good player, but also, eh, I don't know. We might go with Clayton in the third round if he's somehow still available. He probably won't be. Oh, I didn't even look at these guys. Oh boy. I'm going to be here for hours. Okay. Well, those guys look good, but Max Singleton, we'll take him. It's never really good to go with a desperation pick over, you know, actual good players in real life. That's how you draft busts. Well, sometimes. I don't think he's great, but he'll be decent. Let's take him. Hidden Dev, I'm surprised about that. 85 speed, 89 agility, 88 excel. We'll take it. Sure. All right. In last pick, I might go with one of these defensive tackles. Alani Joseph is 6'1", 383. That is a legit bowling ball build. Like, that's insane. Uh, other than the play rec and power moves, he doesn't look very good. I mean, he's really strong too. The reason I like him is because he's strong and he has really good excel, so I, I still might take him. Yeah, I mean, why not? It, this pick doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it's an important pick. It's a third round pick. It's not bad value, but like, I we have enough, so we'll just take a chance on Alani Joseph. Sure. Hidden Dev, 93 strength, 88 acceleration. What? I mean, it, it did say elite. I didn't think it would be that high, though. Holy shit. He's accelerating up to that 62 speed real quick. <laughs> That's deadly. Ooh, okay, the drafts are getting uh, progressively worse every year, but at least we got a good player in Emmett Baxter. 77 overall, 95 speed, 97 excel like we already saw, so I don't know why I don't know why I'm reading that out, but 83 deep route, that's really good. He's better than I thought he would be. I thought he would be about a 75. He's a 77, so we'll take it. Glad he has a hidden dev. Max Singleton isn't very good. Uh, 
he was a 72 at outside linebacker. He's only a 71 at middle, but whatever. He, he'll start. He'll be fine, hopefully. He's also wearing 12. I should probably change that, but I think it's kind of funny to, <laughs> to give a random second round linebacker the number 12. So we're going to keep it. Ooh, Alani Joseph actually looks... Okay, he's only a 72 overall, which is tough. I thought he would be a lot better than that. But 93 strength, 88 acceleration, 78 play rec, 78 power moves. As a rookie, like I would almost think an 80 overall or something, but he also has 59 awareness, 46 finesse moves, 62 speed. So that's not great. Also, how do you have 78 play rec, but you only have 59 awareness? A little bit of a difference there. So you know what's going on, but you don't know what's going on? I'm confused. I don't know what that means. You you somehow understand the plays, but you don't you don't know what's happening. I, like that's weird. I don't know. I also took Luke Peters. He's absolutely terrible, so that's cool. And then I sim the rest out. So I don't know what that draft was. We got a good receiver and a starting linebacker. So sure, why not? That was like legit the worst linebacker class I've ever seen. Oh this. Oh my God. Okay, this might just be the worst class I've ever seen in general. The first ten picks, or we'll say nine picks. The highest overall player was a. 74. What are these? Did I not turn on strong draft classes? Maybe I'm stupid and I didn't. Ah, yeah, that'll do it. Okay. <laughs> I thought I did. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because, you know, everyone gets the, the same strength. It's not a disadvantage or advantage for us, but that'll do it. But let's get into year three. But here we are heading into the season. Jaden Reed got superstar dev, which is definitely cool. Still only an 84 overall, hasn't really developed much. I mean, he had a 1200 yard season and an 1100 yard season and it's still only an 84 overall so i i love the development system great i don't know how many times i can complain about something in this game how did i just skip that was interesting but we have an 85 overall defense looking good here of course it's still a pretty young defense that's the thing here how old is lucas van ness at this point maybe 24 25 i guess he's not like incredibly young anymore but 25 is still definitely young so we'll see if he can hit like an 80 by the end of the year hopefully he plays well i'm kind of worried about that but yeah other than that the defense defense is pretty good. So again, we'll just have to see how we do this year. And I feel like we should have a decent amount of money at the end of this year. I feel like a lot of contracts are going to free up. I think we'll need to sign a lot of contracts though. I guess we'll figure that out when we get to the midseason. But speaking of that, let's get to the midseason and we will see how we do. Still only an 84 overall team, so I'm not sure. Okay, well we are four and three. Do we still not have a losing record at any midseason? That's kind of crazy. We haven't really underperformed yet. That's surprising. Maybe the Packers offensive playbook is just really good. Now the defense hasn't been great. Uh, we're 27th in points per game, 22nd overall apparently, 29th in pass yards per game. So hopefully that can get figured out. If not, we might change the defensive playbook because it really hasn't been that good over the rebuild. But let's see. I'm scared to check the re-signing, so I'm going to stall for a second. Who do we have to upgrade? Cross? Sure. Why not? All right. Who is it? Yeah, Jair Alexander. I forgot we still haven't re-signed Jaden Reed. Why were none of our receivers interested in re-signing. Mostly everyone else has been, but even Dontavian Wicks, why? That's so weird. But everyone else is at least a little interested. I guess not Kyron Williams, but whatever. That's so interesting. But Jair Alexander, we will re-sign, let's go three years, 67 mil. He takes it. Jaden Reed, five years, 79 mil. Doesn't take it. Tough. Quay Walker, four years, 41 mil. He re-signs. Dontavian Wicks, uh, he's not super expensive. Five years, 45 mil. He doesn't take it. I mean, that's fine. Luke Musgrave, four years, 34 mil. We could also try to upgrade there. I mean, he hasn't played super well. He, we just don't really use a tight end that much in this playbook, but we'll think about it. Elton Jenkins, three years, 59 mil. He resigns. Devontae Wyatt's already 28. We'll see. Aaron Jones, we'll see. Zach Tom, four years, 86 mil. He resigns. We are paying our tackles a pretty good amount of money, but that's an important position, so we need to. And that's about all the money we have, so. Oh, Joel Batonio's here too. Why did, why are there some players? it puts towards the back. I wish it didn't do that. I wish I knew Batonio was here. It's always Joel Batonio, it seems like, too. It always pushes him to the back. I don't know why, but hopefully we can get at least Jaden Reed and I guess Joel Batonio back, but I don't think we'll get Joel Batonio back. Hopefully Jaden Reed. We'll see. But once again, let's get to the end of the year. This might be the first year we don't make the playoffs. I feel like our defense just sucks. I mean, it does suck. I don't feel like it sucks. It sucks.
Okay, wow, we are just, this is an 11 and six rebuild apparently. We go 11 and six once again. Our defense did still suck. It was still just as terrible, but I guess our offense stayed about the same, so it didn't matter too much. Let's check out our stats though. That's kind of interesting. Jordan Love was very good once again, similar, very similar year to last year. 3,800 yards, 34 touchdowns, eight picks, 73% completion percentage though. That's crazy. Aaron Jones was still good, almost 1,300 yards, 4.1 per carry, 10 touchdowns, 11 touchdowns for Kyron Williams. Jaden Reed, another 1,000-yard season, 9 touchdowns. Emmett Baxter, as a rookie, 900 yards, 11 touchdowns. I wasn't sure if he was going to get much production, but all three of our receivers did get a good amount of yards, so that's good. Wicks, 948 yards. Musgrave wasn't great. I don't think we'll bring... Oh, I just dropped my controller, damn. Uh, I don't think we'll bring him back because, like, you know, we just don't use tight end. The O-line was... I'm surprised with how good this offensive line has been. I know quarterback has an effect on it, so I guess Jordan Love's just really good. I don't know. Zach Tom was our, our worst lineman, but he was still fine. And then on defense, Quay Walker led the team with 130 tackles. Tackles for loss, 17 from Kenny Clark led the team, 16 for Devontae Wyatt. And sacks, 12 from Rashawn Gary, 6 from Devontae Wyatt, 5.5 from Kenny Clark, only 3.5 from Lucas Van Ness. So, we might look for another pass rusher. We'll see, because that's, that's terrible. In almost 1,100 snaps, you only get 3.5 sacks. That's crazy to me. And then interceptions five for Eric Stokes. I mean, we'll take that. That's not who I expected to get the most, but two for Cooper DeGene and then one from Quay Walker and Jair Alexander. So again, not many interceptions. What, nine this year? I guess it's better than last year because we had seven, but still. I think we'll change the defensive playbook. But MVP goes to Caleb Williams, of course, on the Vikings. We just can't escape a division rival winning MVP or at least a massive award. I don't know. But no Jordan Love up here again somehow. Offensive player of the year goes to Caleb Williams. No Packers. Defensive player of the year goes to Micah Parsons again. Offensive player or offensive rookie of the year does go to Emmett Baxter. So that's huge. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Rashard Griffin, of course, for the Vikings. Beating out our player, Max Singleton. That happens once every rebuild, at least. We get cucked for an award by a division rival. Tough. But we are going to be losing this wild card game because we are taking on the Atlanta Falcons in the wild card. They are broken in this game. Now, I don't know. They, they don't seem as broken as they used to be for some reason, but we'll see what happens. We have some upgrades though. Anything important? Eric Stokes. That's cool. He might get superstar dev. We'll see. I hope he does, but we'll go slot. He gets two overall. That's huge. Remember kids always spend your slot upgrades when you have man corners, but let's simulate this game and we will see if we can somehow get a win. No, <laughs> we lose 27 to 17. We had the better roster, but what can you do? What, what can I do about that? I don't know. I am going to change our defensive playbook though. Just to which one is the question. I've heard Steelers is good. I've used Steelers and it's terrible. I've heard Falcons is good. I've used Falcons and it wasn't great. I've heard the Patriots is good. Every single time I've used it, it has been horrifically bad, but I don't know. We'll try the Steelers. Sure. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully Jordan Love can finally get superstar dev too. Like he's had three amazing seasons and still only has star dev. We'll see what happens. Uh, and unfortunately, all of our rookies, we haven't drafted anyone with better than star dev this entire rebuild. Other than the first year we got did DeGene have superstar dev or did he get it? I don't know, but I think Kalen King had superstar dev and that's it. So unlucky. <laughs> Hopefully Baxter can get superstar. I'm assuming he will. He's also up to 96 speed, 98 excel. So that's nice. But let's get into the off season, possibly the final off season of the rebuild because we'll get to the point where we just can't really upgrade this team anymore. It'll become expensive and already really good. So hey, we'll see. I haven't really made many player trades. We could do that this year if we have the cap. We might not have the cap though. <laughs> I guess it depends. But the Vikings were in the Super Bowl. They lose 37 to 31 to the Chiefs. Interesting. But Emmett Baker does get an upgrade. I'm more worried about superstar dev, so hopefully he got that. But plus three awareness, cool. And yeah, he does get superstar dev. Okay. I still want a better overall receiver than the players we have. But I mean, Jaden Reed is really good, assuming we can re-sign him. Did we get any dev ups other than Baxter? Oh, Aaron Jones retired. That's interesting. I didn't expect that. I wasn't going to bring him back anyways, but it's still interesting. Uh, Eric Stokes got superstar. That's cool. And I was just saying, we didn't draft any superstars this entire rebuild other than the first year, but Alani Joseph does actually have superstar. And I would imagine that wasn't a dev up. No. So that's cool, but that's it. <laughs> we got one dev up and one superstar, but let's see who we can re-sign. I would imagine we won't have much cap to work with, so I'm going to have to restructure some deals, but that's fine. Okay. We have 12 mil to work with. We'll pick up the fifth year for Cooper DeGene. Luke Musgrave, we unfortunately will
will not bring back, I don't think, unless we have like a ton of leftover cap, which we won't, I'll say that. Wait, let me check, did Joel Batonio retire? I didn't even like pay attention to that. No, he's still here, so we might be able to re-sign him, but let me see who we can restructure and or cut, I guess. Okay, well, we freed up a lot of cap space. We have 56 mil to work with. That's a lot more than I expect. So Jaden Reed, uh, I hope we can get him back. We'll probably have to do a little bit of this, which still isn't even that much money, especially at this point in the future where players will just be way more expensive. Five years, 90 mil. He doesn't take it. Damn. Okay. Well, we're... What? I was like, oh, this will probably be 30 mil or something. 45 mil if we want to tag Jaden Reed. You know, I'm going to hope we can get him back in free agency, but there is no fucking way I'm paying him 45 mil. <laughs> I We need other players. He can't be our only player on the roster. Joel Batonio, two years, 40 mil. He takes it. Cool. That's huge, actually. I don't know why I'm so, like, nonchalant about that, but yeah, that is huge. And then Devontae Wyatt is already 29. I mean, he's replaceable. We have other guys. Same with Luke Musgrave. We just don't use him much, so it doesn't really make sense to pay him. Yeah, I think we're good on everyone else here. I'll try to re-sign Jaden Reed, but if not, we'll see if there are other good receivers available. So let's get into free agency, and let's see what's happening. Okay. Okay, well, it's good I didn't give Jaden Reed 45 mil per year because there is AJ Brown and Tyreek Hill. Uh, yeah, that's that's a little bit of an upgrade. Wait, why does it say we have, what did that say before? Did that say 56 up there still? Now we have 36? I don't know what happened. I'm confused. But we do get a lead for AJ Brown and I, I kind of want Jaden Reed back. I feel like, you know, Packers fans are gonna want him back. I mean, there's not much I can do about that. He just rejected us, but we'll see. Let me restructure the Joel Batonio deal that we literally just just signed. Damn, this team is expensive though. I mean, we're not really paying any outside players, just Joel Batonio. Other than that, we're just paying some Packers players. And I guess Grant Delpit, but he's not that expensive. I think we're gonna have our work cut out for us in the draft. Yeah, I would like Jaden Reed back. We just can't afford him. But hey, we upgrade there, so that's not too bad. And then is there a good D lineman here? That would be kind of a nice addition. Again, not something we really need. We can probably just draft a D lineman, but might as well look. We could go for Bradley Chuck. Hub? No, we don't have the money. Let's see. I want to sign someone other than AJ Brown. All right, maybe an interesting one, but our defense has been terrible, so we'll try to make an addition there, Kyle Duggar. Let me just make sure again that there's nothing major I'm forgetting about that would be hard to draft. Oh, that's right. Aaron Jones retired. Uh, Well, I don't like rookie running backs. As y'all know, the Madden generated ones are always just terrible, so we I'll check free agency there. The line is good. Tight end. I mean, we'll probably draft a tight end, but Brewer at least has star dev for whatever that's worth. And then we have three good D linemen. Really only two get much playing time for some reason. Do we even really need Kyle Duggar? I mean, Hicks isn't that bad. Let's see. How about a running back? I'm pretty sure Khalil Herbert is terrible in this game. Eh, well, f four yards per carry on the dot isn't great, but we'll see if there's someone better. Jalen Warren, eh, Zach Charbonnet. I doubt he's started, so it's going to be a small sample size. Yeah, I don't know. Kyron Williams, how did he do when he started? Uh, it's been a while, but four yards per carry. Huh, I really don't know if there's a good option here. <laughs> Honestly. Tajay Spears, has he started? No. Well, I guess we'll go with a player that's interested and in steal him from a division rival in Khalil Herbert. And then I guess we'll also try to bring Carl Brooks back. Sure. Why not? Let's see if these three players want to sign and we get all three of them. Oh, God, imagine we didn't get AJ Brown. I might have cried. Comparing the old face scans to the new ones is so weird. Like, look how bright it makes Khalil Herbert compared to AJ Brown. I don't know what they did to the vibrance, but it's something. Or not face scans, but pictures. You know what I mean. But we we are looking good. We're up to an 86 and we still have the draft to get to. So I think we're going to look for a receiver, maybe a tight end and a pass rusher, maybe and maybe a D lineman. But honestly, we're kind of good. So ooh, I wonder if I can cheese it and restructure AJ Brown. How much would this save? 10 mil? Let's go get another player real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Mine as well. Khalil, Khalil Herbert too. Saves an extra mil. Sure. I don't know if Carl Brooks will save too much. 800k. Sure. Why not? Let's get another player. You know what? Kyle Duggar, a player I was gonna get. Why not? Does he want to sign? Yes, he does. All right, cool. That's a little cheesy, but we can just say we we backloaded the contract, all all those contracts, which is I guess what we did. But we'll just say we did that when we signed him. How about that? And now let's get to the draft. But this year the Cardinals have the number one pick. We pick a little earlier at number twenty four. I guess that's the positive of going out early in the playoffs. Again, there were some receivers that I saw that were really good, and unfortunately they are gone. There was an insane insane looking receiver though. And he wasn't even projected to go like top five or anything, like mid first or something. I don't know. We'll see what his overall was. Michael Barnes looks actually pretty good. Bad medium route, but every 
everything else looks good. What's he, he's listed as a deep threat. Do we really want another deep threat? I think we need a little diversity. Oh great, another deep threat. I mean, this is one of the guys I focus scouted, but I don't know, that guy doesn't look very good. Greg Davis, he actually looks pretty good. Elite jumping, he's interesting. We'll think about him. Chad Witherspoon, he uh, he might be good. I don't know, I don't know who I wanna go with. None of, the, none of these receivers really do anything for me. I mean, they all look pretty good, but none of them look insane. Actually, Jalen Watkins kinda looks really good. He's a playmaker with A spec catch, B short route, at least decent receiving ability overall. He's probably really good, but I don't know if I wanna take him yet, cause he's not supposed to go for a while. Let's see, is there anything else I could take? Wow, there's not one draftable center. Let's see, are, are there one of those, or is there one of those crazy like 80 plus overall guards? Britton Dobbins looks good. I don't think there's a crazy good guard this year. Not that we really need offensive line at all, but I don't know, I want something. How about a pass rusher? I never looked at any of these guys, but we'll see. Eh. Cliff Andrews is interesting. We might take him round two. Elite strength, a play rec is really rare even for like a high first round pass rusher. That's interesting. Barely scouted, but he might be our second round pick. We'll see. He'll he'll probably get taken, but I think he's good. Ooh. Okay, we definitely don't need a safety, but Roy Blackstock or Rudy Blackstock is definitely good. Same with Cedric Patton. Okay, this is a strong safety class, but let's go with I think we'll go with Michael Barnes. Elite acceleration, great change of direction and agility and speed, which a 447 I wouldn't call great. It's fine. It's a decent for a receiver. I don't know how that's great in elite. Like I, I just hate shit like that. It's so dumb. That doesn't make sense. Like in what world is that great in elite? I don't know. I'm having a hard time with this pick. All right, sure. We'll go with Michael Barnes. I have no idea if he's good or not, but sure. Hidden dev, 93 speed, 95 excel. We'll take it. And let's see if that one guy's still available. Was it Isaiah Me? Meekins? I didn't even pay attention to the guy's name. It might have been Isaiah Meekins. No, I don't think. Or is it? No, there. I didn't even see this guy. He doesn't look quite as good. Okay, that's tough. Ooh, Amari Bradford. Ooh, he looks really good. Uh, we have so many D linemen, but he does look really good. We might take him. All right, yeah, sure. Why not? Amari Bradford out of Arkansas. Welcome to the team. Hidden Dev, 89 strength, 76 speed, 84 excel at defensive tackle. Cool. And I think the last pick I'm going to make. Oh my God. Jam. <laughs> Jalen Watkins went one pick before us. That's fun. But last pick of the rebuild. What do we want to do? I might go with another receiver because I'm not 100% confident in the receiver we took in the first round. Ooh, 26 bench reps. What the hell? Again, that receiver had great speed and elite acceleration with a 4.47. This guy only has good and solid speed and acceleration and he ran a 4.42. I, I don't get it. Tim Muldrow, I, ooh, I might go with him. I like these uh like fast slot receivers. They're usually really really good. He has good speed, elite acceleration, A short route, A catch in traffic, B medium route, which is kind of different for a slot receiver. His F release, but it doesn't usually matter. They, the slot receivers usually do have F release. Yeah, sure. He looks good. Let's take him. Normal dev. They always have normal, but good speed, good acceleration. We'll take it. All right. Another, another suspect draft. Uh, <laughs> no great players, but for good players, I guess. Uh, my last pick was Gordon Richards, so I took all these guys. Barnes is only a 74. I kind of thought he would be better. Same with, honestly, all three of these guys. I thought Barnes would be like a 75, which isn't that much different. I thought Bradford could be like a 77 plus, and I thought Muldrow would be at least a 75, probably higher. So that's tough. I mean, I, they all looked better than they actually are, I guess, at least to me. I don't know. But especially Bradford. He had like an A and a B for everything. Just his block shedding isn't that good, but... I, I don't know. He's a pass rusher. That's not really his point anyways. Well, that is, but like that's more for run, I guess, against the run. You know what I mean? Yeah, Muldrow only a 74, but that's still good value for the third round. Dylan Vo Vogt? Voigt? Vogt? I don't know what that last name is, but probably Voigt. I think you say that Voigt. I don't know. Either way, 73 overall hidden dev. He'll be our number two. We could even start him because he could have a really good dev trait. We'll see. He's only a 66 possession tight end though, so I don't know, but he's a good blocker. 77 impact block at tight end. That's crazy. But anyways, let's get into the final year of this rebuild and we will see how the team's looking. This ended up being a, a pretty good one, but harder than I expected. All right, well, we are looking pretty damn good heading into the final year of the rebuild. This team kind of still resembles the Packers. I mean, I guess we only have like three Packers starters on offense. Jordan Love, Zach Tom, and Elton Jenkins, but you know, we had to do what we had to do. I just stuttered hard. I don't know why. But yeah, 87 offense, 87 defense, 87 overall. I like the addition of AJ Brown. Our receiving core is good overall.
overall. It's three different players. I guess the top, f everyone's different in this receiving core than w the players we started with. So that's something. You know, like we've been over, I wanted to bring some of those receivers back. They just refused. So <laughs> nothing I can do about that. But yeah, really good team overall. I think I'm, mm, Bradford, I guess I'll just move him up right here. I don't know how much playing time that's going to get him, but I'd, I'd, I'd rather have him start than Carl Brooks. The main worry I have for this team is Lucas Van Ness. We just couldn't upgrade there. I forgot to check what that outside linebacker that we were looking at was rated. I wonder if I can find him. <laughs> this is going to take forever. Let me see. Was it Jimmy Jarrett? Did I already find him? Uh, what's his player at? No, I don't think that was him. Okay, I checked it back and it was Cliff Andrews who would have been good. He only has normal dev to be fair, but he's a 76 overall. That would have been a nice pick. I wish I could have got him, but that's tough. He only has 74 play rec. That was an A, really? Interesting, but 83 power moves, 82 speed, 82 excel. That would have been nice, but he's only normal dev anyways, so whatever. We still would have started Lucas Van Ness, I think. But yeah, this team's amazing. It's, it's, it's good. I'll say that. I won't quite say amazing. This is probably one of the lower overall teams I've had heading into a final season, but it's still a pretty good team. So let's get to the end of the final year of this rebuild, and we will see how we do. Ooh, okay. <laughs> well, here we are at the end of the rebuild. And of course, with the highest overall team we have had, we finish the worst we have done in this entire rebuild. We finish nine and eight with an 88 overall team. And I'm curious, where does that rank in the league? Probably not the best, maybe like top three. The Lions also have an 88, that's interesting. The Chiefs, oh, they have a 90, damn, okay. The Bucks also have an 88, so it looks like we are tied for second in roster talent. And somehow we went nine and eight, so that's cool. We had a terrible offense this year. Our defense was a lot better. Well, was it? <laughs> I mean, we didn't allow many points, but our pass D was still shit, and we were bad in like every single category. Uh, that's concerning. Our offense was bad overall, but it was good in some... Ra what a... This game is so weird. I... Whatever. You can never just be good when you have a good team. It's always like, well, you were okay, but this was terrible, and this was terrible, and this was terrible, and this underperformed. Like, whatever, dude. We, we built a good roster. Jordan Love finished with 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, and only three interceptions with a 76% complete, completion percentage, and almost a one 120 passer rating. Oh my god. Khalil, oh, Khalil Herbert was terrible. Did hit a thousand yards, but 3.3 yards per carry. Yikes. 11 touchdowns. Yeah, that's how a, an 85 overall should play. That makes sense. AJ Brown led the team with 1,300 yards and 13 touchdowns. Emmett Baxter, 900 yards. Barnes is a rookie, only 700 yards. Yeah, our, our offense just wasn't as good this year. The blocking was still good. Quay Walker led the team with 113 tackles. Tackles for loss, 14 from Kenny Clark. 13 for Gary, 12 for Bradford as a rookie, who was very good, by the way. 12 tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks. Should be up there for defensive rookie of the year. He'll probably get beat out by a Vikings player. And sacks, that seven and a half led the team from Amari Bradford. Six and a half for Kenny Clark, only six and a half for Rashawn Gary, and only two and a half for Lucas Van Ness. I always hate when the, like, massive down year, I guess not massive, because we at least made the playoffs, but just underperformance. I always hate when it comes in the final year. Like, what can I do about that? just a lame way to finish the rebuild, but Eric Stokes led the team with three picks, two for Jair Alexander, and then one for Singleton, Duggar, and Delpit. But let's check out yearly awards. Mahomes wins MVP again. Jordan Love at number eight, so he's at least up there. That's good. Offensive player of the year goes to CD Lamb. AJ Brown at number seven. D-Hop now on the Viking, or on the Giants. That's interesting. I don't know why I said Vikings. I guess they're just on my mind. I don't know. Jalen Carter wins defensive player of the year. No Packers at all. Offensive rookie of the year goes to DeAndre. Angelo Cosby for the pan yeah the Panthers. Michael Barnes at number two. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter if we get cucked for awards here because we're not going to get the rewards for him anyways, but still. Daniel Vocht at number four. Oh, we had someone. Oh my God, I called it. We had someone at number 10, Tim Muldrow, the fourth receiver, and Tim Dobson for the Cardinals wins defensive rookie of the year. Bradford at number two. I guess it wasn't a Vikings player, but we still get cucked either way. So kind of an unfortunate end to this one, but I did what I could and I built a good team. We all have collectively built 
built a good team here today. Unless you disagreed with my roster moves, then trust the process. I don't know. But we have a playoff rivals scenario here. We are going to be losing to the Vikings in the wild card, so that, that's, that's going to be fun. We will go a uh, chess match, I guess. I never know what to go for this. Is there... Oh, let me ask this question. No question of the day because I forgot and I'm stupid, but this will be the, the question I ask for the comments. Does it matter literally at all what you go with there? Like, is there a proven better one to go with for playoff rivals? I don't know. Such a niche question, but I just... I want to know. Is there a better one to go with? Or do they... I have no idea. Maybe nobody knows. But we also have a hot opponent scenario. Shout out Bobby Shmurda. I don't think I've said that in a long time. I kind of forgot. But we will go be confident. Y'all know me. Plus 10 everything for both teams. Beautiful. We also have some upgrades before our inevitable demise. Blake Freeland, huge. But let's simulate it out. And we will see if we can somehow take down Caleb Williams and the Vikings. No. <laughs> Unlucky. We lose 37 to 31. You hate to see it. That's tragic. But again, this was a fun rebuild. This was definitely an interesting team. This is, this was a surprisingly hard rebuild. I didn't think this would be a hard one. Maybe I just, it was probably the drafts that I forgot to set strong draft classes. That's probably what did it, but I don't know. Still one of the better rosters in the league, like top two. So I would say we did pretty well either way. It's a really good looking team on paper, but I really hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Again, if you did, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe again through 3,500, whatever, like goal I set, I don't know, and I'll do a similar team to this. That's the best way I know how to describe it without giving it away. Subscribe for more. We are very close to 40k, and let me know any fun rebuild ideas y'all have down below, but thank you all so much for watching, and with that, I'll see y'all again in the next video. Goodbye.